Hey there everybody. I um, don't know if I'm going to be able to pull this video off or not because I think it might be too ad-libbed and it might be a little bit too mental but um, there's a subject that I'm never really quite sure how to discuss it really and that's um, the woodworking and politics relationship. Um, it's quite an odd one really and if I had to blame anybody for this I think I'd blame our friends in the arts and crafts movement um, back in the 19th century. I think they're the ones that really started to struggle with it. And I, I kind of get where they were coming from. You know, um, people were regularly treated like shit. And that's not a good thing. Nobody wanted to see that. But the big flaw of that whole concept with the arts and crafts people was they were just as bad. They were people from comfortable backgrounds who just felt guilty about being rich. They restrained the furniture design and whatever it might be to appeal to, I don't know, a bit more of a refined sensibility that, oh, I'm not going to be garish like the 18th century and all the rest of it and, or whatever. I can't cover all of my critique of it. Don't get me wrong, I love the aesthetic of so many arts and crafts pieces, but... Most of the people in that movement, like I said, were incredibly independently wealthy. And because they had pretty much whack job philosophies of how everything should be made by hand and mechanisation should be just pushed to the sides, it had completely the reverse effect. It didn't benefit anybody. The only people it benefited were rich people because you just made exclusive items that poor people couldn't afford absolutely ridiculous it's a great case of well-meaning rich people who don't have any experience of what it's like to be hard up thinking they know better and it's like do you know what stick to wearing a beret and philosophizing somewhere and don't get involved or even better give everything away that you've got to the people that you're worried about all right because they're all so worried about the working person, all so worried about them, but not so worried to give anything up of theirs. You know, I find the behaviour of a lot of the 18th century um, people pretty despicable. You've only got to look at a documentary about um, Chippendale, very famous English furniture ma maker, and he was ruined by his pursuit of absolute excellence. He wanted to decorate and provide the best furnishings possible, take things to a new height. And people just didn't pay him. But, and it was disgusting. They were complete shitheads. But what I kind of like about those people is that they knew they were shitheads. They didn't pretend to be anything else but a shithead. And you could call them a shithead. But now it's like the arts and crafts people, well, you know, we're all very nice and we're all trying to work this stuff out. And it's like, no, you're not. Not really. The only thing they might have helped with is saying, do you know what? We've maybe missed something with the aesthetic for simple craft. That's all for me their lesson was. And then bringing some of that element into the into designs of furniture and architecture. Nothing else. The rest they can stick. But that's from a historical thing. I bring it forward a little bit into the future. Um, again, I... For me personally, if I watch, I don't know, some of my favourite sport or whatever it might be, I used to like watching a bit of preamble. Um, but these days, I don't want to hear interviews with people or anything. I just want to enjoy a game or a race or whatever it might be. I pretty much turn it off afterwards, unless it's been really exciting. And you just think, well, there's going to be like a bit of a reaction here. I'm really not bothered. Pretty much, again, when I come to do some woodworking, it's like, I just want to concentrate on that and I might take some inspiration from different areas but over the recent few years the amount of extra politics that gets thrown into it about I don't know it's it's just it's just everywhere I mean it seems that again there's that kind of arts and crafts vibe out there at the minute where people are afraid to be quite honest and say actually they sell stuff that is not aimed at your average Joe. As far as I'm concerned, your average person isn't going to be spending 1800 quid on 
one dining chair, like a stick chair or something like that, just one. No way, okay? You've got to be earning some serious cash. And yeah, you can earn some serious cash with lots of jobs, but you're moving up into professional realms. I'm sure different countries vary on what the remuneration is. And then there's a counterpoint that's often put out. And it's like, hey, just go and make your own. Well, that, that to me is, that's the biggest lie. Here's, here's some brutal truth for you. If you're going to make some stuff for yourself, yes, you don't need much space. But here, here at one end of it, we've got people that will say, hey, if you've got a collection of 50 good quality tools, um, you can make kind of whatever you want. It's like, okay, let's look at 50 good quality tools. I don't know what all of those tools might be, but let's say good quality means new and high-end-ish. Let's say each one of those uh, is £100. That's £5,000 you're going to chuck at it. And if you come in at this and you don't know anything about it, you don't even know how to use these things. Brilliant. So your furniture, your family, while they're waiting for furniture, they're going to be like, um, Mum, Dad, when are the chairs going to be ready? When When's the dining table going to be ready? Well, hang on. I've got to go out. I've got to get my ethically sourced tools. Um, I've got to make hand make my own workbench first because all the standard ones are rubbish. Um, I've got to get this expensive vice hardware. Um, oh, hang on a minute. I've just got to upgrade my um, cutting iron in my plane. And I've got to use a certain kind of wood. By the time those chairs are ready, the children have left home. You know? <laughs> and they need to be fed and watered and school clothes bought for them. And also, you, again, that's the thing. You need time to do this. Who Who has got the time to completely deck out their house? And I know people can say, hey, just use some nailed together furniture. I love that kind of lovely kind of stripped back country approach. But it's a bit like it's like, well, the only option is that. Well, that's not much fun, is it? Not all the time. And you will need some space. And then people might say, well, you should just use a room in your house. It's like, well, a lot of people's houses are really small. And I'm pretty sure if we just said, okay, I'm just going to have my woodworking in that area and I'm going to be smashing away and doing what I'm going to do. That's not going to happen. OK, and then there's buying the wood cost machines to get into this. If you think you're going to be making stuff yourself on any kind of scale, if you listen to a lot of people who feel uncomfortable about making money, they, they would have you spend nearly 10 grand on this stuff. The reality is. I just hate hearing woodworking at politics put together especially when it's put in there to justify someone selling something like their antidote to it all, you know, to make them feel better about themselves. It's only a personal gripe. This is a ranty video. I'll probably regret making it and I might even delete it. But yeah, it drives me mental. It's like I always make sure in my videos and, you know, I'm going to misspeak at some point and say stuff I don't mean. But the only reason I've highlighted some of these like Bailey planes or these Bailey style planes is that I'll give you the truth. Lee Nielsen's are brilliantly made, but they, they there's jack shit difference between a Lee Nielsen performance and one of these. Jack shit difference in real world. The furniture won't know the difference. Yet lots of people will say, oh, you need to get one of those. Well, that's 300 quid gone. Bang. If you can even get them because they're not available because there's just massive global shortage. That's not me taking a dump on Lee Nielsen. They make fantastic products for people who can afford it. And that's brilliant. But here's an option, and these are just as good. And there's no, there's no two ways about it. They are just as good. Your work will be just as good with one of these as it will with a more expensive item. And one of the reasons I explain about stuff like this is so when you come to get something like a router plane, which they were never available in the, in the numbers that these planes were because they weren't so specialist. You know, um, a caretaker can find all these useful to... Um, ease a door in a school building or a cabinet maker can use one for putting the final finish on a piece of furniture but a router plane you look at maybe some joiners and it might have been shared among a few and some furniture makers so there's not many of them around so too with shoulder planes so the used market for them is expensive so i'll be like well make a few things build some confidence but it's like this whole thing where you're going to build this wonderful ethical life from nothing. I don't 
not try and live your dreams because of what I'm saying, but it's like, yeah, the arts and crafts guys got me back in the day. It's, they make me cringe. I love the aesthetic, but the whole philosophy, it makes me sick. It's disingenuous. It's a complete fib. And so too, I think it's creeping in today where, you know, it's this whole thing of this very, I don't know how to describe it. Um, again, because I'm not particularly clever. I'm not an educated person, but it's like, Poor people had basic, simple stuff, and they don't really need educated people telling them how they can, oh, I'll show you how to do this, and I'll show you how to do that, but you have to invest all of this. How many poor people maybe even have the luxury of a single garage? You know, I count myself really, really lucky, and I haven't got the time to be knocking out custom furniture for myself at the weekend all the time. I've made some bits, I made one TV cabinet for you, which I might share with you in the future. I did that on and off for about a year. It took me to finish that. A whole year. Because I've got other commitments. I've got a family. I've got a job that takes up my time. There's some pets. What do you want me to do? Set up a tent in my house. Don't, like, don't get married and just do all of that. You know, fine if you work for a magazine and you could make stuff for your house. Or you, you know, part of what you do is maybe make stuff make plans of that stuff and then sell it whatever but this is more my problem I just need to not read stuff that annoys me but really my only word of advice is try and keep the sanctimoniously holier than thou crap out of woodworking and just enjoy it for what it is it's a craft for me that can just lift you away from stress and hassle it can really focus you. If it gives you some other benefit, that's great. That's going to be down to the individual. But the whole politics side of it is just vomit. You know, you spend your money on an infill for all I care. You can be a city banker and buy 15 infills, some whole tie ones, whatever you want. I don't care. It's no business. I don't, I don't care. Do what you want. I have no judgment of you. And... Also, remember, here's a massive point you need to remember. Without people who, there is some hierarchy in the structure of society, people that are higher, and there always will be. I wouldn't want to watch a sport where there wasn't a competitive hierarchy. It wouldn't, the Olympics would be pretty dull, right? If it was an equal outcome sprint, there would be no Usain Bolt, there'd be no enjoyment, there'd be no Muhammad Ali. That wouldn't have happened. There'd be no Jesse Owens at the 1930s Olympics. That wouldn't have happened because they were the best at what they did. And so too with someone who can spend the money on a whole tight infill plane. Again, I can get a surface with those planes just as good as a whole tie. But that whole tie is like a Fabergé egg made by a wonderful engineer. And he's patroned by people who have obscene amounts of cash in relation to me that they can invest on those tools. That's great, but that's a hierarchy and it exists. And no matter how many DIY playing kits you buy, it's completely different. You're buying into that. If you buy from a specific person, it's because you want part of that hierarchy. You want to say that I've got a, you know, Nike Air Jordan shoes or whatever, not that I know anything about basketball, rather some crap from down the market, which I would have worn when I was a kid. You know, hierarchies aren't a bad thing. You know, back in the day when we're wearing fur pants out in the wild, you know, you want the one that's strongest with a club to be beating off attackers, clubbing them over the head or hunting you meat to eat. You you need it. Hierarchies are good. They, they are good. So, yeah, really ranty video, completely out of context with everything I do. But hopefully it will show you how mental I am. <laughs> and um, Perhaps this video, I'll even delete it. I don't know. OK. See you soon for this um, video. I'm going to do a little bit of a breakdown on these planes and do a little bit of a kind of what to look for when you're looking for them secondhand so you don't have to monkey around with them too much. All right, good to talk. Speak soon.